They say it's the greatest homecoming on earth at North Carolina A&T, and with a picturesque fall afternoon in the forecast, the stands at BB&T Stadium will be filled to the brim to see these two legendary HBCUs square off on the east side of Greensboro. Welcome into the booth here at BB&T Stadium. I'm Spencer Turkin alongside my partner, Stan Luter. Stan, we have quite the football game that's about to take place behind us just moments away. Well, it's everything you ever dreamed of. It's homecoming, it's a beautiful fall afternoon, and you've got two teams desperately needing wins. Uh, certainly, and we have two of the conference's leading rushers that are about to square off. Well, Howard, I really like Dedrick Parson. Last year he was the MEAC Rookie of the Year, and he's a leading rusher for the Howard Bison football team. He's a guy that can go inside as well as out. He's going to have to have a solid ball game today if Howard expects to pull off the upset. And for North Carolina a t John Maine Martin. He leads the conference in rushing. He's about 155 yards to get to 1,000 to kind of add to that list of great Aggie running backs. Here's the thing I like about him. He's got speed and power. Eight touchdowns already this year of 20 yards or better. He can go inside, he can go outside, and on a homecoming afternoon, I expect some fireworks. Can the Aggies keep their celebration bowl hopes alive, or will the Howard Bison stampede on their parade? We'll find out on the other side of this timeout. It's Howard and North Carolina A&T coming up next on ESPN3. Around victory, or will the Spartans win out in the hunt? It's the road to the 2019 Celebration Bowl. May the wildest team win. Uh, welcome back out to BB&T Stadium here in Greensboro, North Carolina. It's Howard and North Carolina A&T getting set for kickoff. Jordan Ailey will boot this one away for the Bison. Nick Ferris is out today with an undisclosed injury. Isaiah Moore, the punter, also will be missing from today's game. Back to the game on the Carolina A&T. It'll be Corey Banks and Tamon Cook. Haley approaches. That is the squid kick on the ground. A&T able to pick it up. And advance it just shy of the 40. It'll be William Simpson who was able to secure that one. And we are underway here in Greensboro. For North Carolina A&T starting to get this shot done as our school quarterback. It'll be Khalil Carter, the Austell, Georgia native graduate student. Last week at FAM, 21-31. One interception, no touchdown, 251 yards in the loss. A&T will begin this game on the ground. John Mayne Martin across the 40. Spencer, as we're watching this game on a glorious homecoming afternoon, keep something in mind. This is a North Carolina A&T team that I think is going to pound it. Today. The number one offensive team in the Mid-Eastern Athletic Conference, number one in total offense, and most importantly, averaging about 235 yards a game. We'll tell you more in a second. Carter keeps it, gives the stiff arm, still alive, spins out of the tackle, earns the first down, and is in to Bison territory. Great run. That up 475 yards and you see a little one-on-one -on -one matchup and they expect to see A&T run the football a lot. Nice solid tackle that time by Rodney Denard, one of those guys that Howard depends on to make some plays. Leslie the motion man, play action, Carter pump fakes, lost one down the sideline, he's got Banks who's able to come down with it and there's a flag on the play. And yeah, that's going to be a hold by Jalen Smith for a pass in the field, still going to affect the play at all. Nice pass in the field by Jordan Conley. Good start offensively early. South Carolina transfer Corey Banks. 21 receptions on the year, had seven grabs at Florida A&M on Sunday. And the penalty was declined. The referee today, Willie Bernard. So it's 10 for North Carolina A&T, the 15 of Howard. Six 
position as a fullback. You expect to do a power play or something. Give it to Martin. Play action again. Carter. Tried to hit the tight end, Jarvis Reed, but that pass left a little short, incomplete, brings up second down. And we're trying to call that play a little bit, and that's what you're going to see a lot of. Lead back, play fake, in that case to Martin, all the eyes are there, you're in one on one matchup, and a nice defensive play that time by the Howard Bison. They're going to be tested early and often on this Saturday afternoon. Howard giving up 251.9 rushing yards a game. Team plans to keep this ball on the ground, and they do so here. Jamain Martin able to cut it up for a few. North Carolina A&T, after your game a week ago, when you got off, you know, you scored on your first possession, but so did Fan. You want to get off to a good start today. Get that bad taste of the loss out of your mouth. It's something to keep in mind. Howard is giving up 83 points alone in the first quarter. So getting off to a start, there's an opportunity for you doing that. You see a little bit of variety in the hour by the anti offense passing, short passing, power running, quarterback keepers. Carter will bark out some orders here on third down. It's always helpful to have a guy like John Mayne Martin in the back of the second in FCS in rushing yards per game. Carter throws it to Martin, and he is thumped right away by Jalen Smith. Jalen Smith, one of the more active defensive players for this Howard team, came in with 12 tackles, four in their loss against Norfolk State a week ago. A big, solid tackle. This Howard defense, you got to give a lot of credit because AT was trying to get his body blows. 38% defensively on fourth down, on third down, I should say, fourth best in the conference. When they were tested on third down, they were able to rise to the occasion. Noel Ruiz on for the 27 yard field goal attempt. Put the uprights and give AT a 3 0 lead to begin this ball game. Twelve oh nine to go here in the first. Aggies on their first possession. We'll be back after this on ESPN three. Carolina A&T strikes first. It's 3-0 Aggies over the Bison of Howard. Noel Ruiz with a 27-yard field goal. 251 came off the clock on that first drive. Very impressive drive early for A&T. Good field position, able to drive it down. Probably disappointed if you're the Aggie coaching staff and Sam Washington, you're not able to punch that through for the touchdown. But you get on the board and really quick, you're able to get that defense out here. And if you're Howard, you know, you've got to be happy. They got a couple of blows of the head, but they did not go down. Forced the field goal, and it gives them time to sit back and relax and try to figure out some other things. Hendrick Parson will step up and field the kickoff. And he is stopped shy of the 25. with a big time homecoming hit. Parson, we have talked a lot about this afternoon. If things go to you know, Howard Bison way on offense, very versatile kick return guy. He catch passes out of the backfield, but he makes his money going into the and has the speed to bounce outside. The 2018 MEAC Rookie of the Year had 932 yards and 10 total touchdowns just a season ago. Williams will hand it off, and the a and defense not fooled on the option. That'll be a loss of a few on the first play from scrimmage for the Bison. Quentin Williams was a freshman that they really didn't anticipate playing a lot because of Kayla Newton. They haven't heard that story enough. He decided to transfer, and so Williams has been stepped in. In this three ball game, 53 of 93, you know, three interceptions and six touchdowns. He's not a bad quarterback, a lively arm and good legs. Steps up, tucks it, runs it across the 30, and semi-slides into the 33. We just shy of the first down mark. And it'll bring up third and about one. And you saw a moment ago, Spencer, a little bit of what we were talking about. His ability to run the football. Williams is the second leading rusher for this Howard team. He and Parsons combined. 536 of the 755 yards in the game. So you're going to get that one-two combination of those two guys running that ball. 
Williams hands the ball off. The door is closed, and Parsons will have to fall to the ground shy of that first down marker. It'll put a four in the box. That's too quick. AT reads it. Trying to roll around a run option. Have problems at the mesh point. There's too many Aggies to talk about. Jacob Roberts, 57, among others, they're trying to make that good outside bounce by Trey Smalls. Look for him to have a big football game today. Again, also number nine, Antoine Wilder. Those guys are so good at linebacker and defensive end spots. It's going to be very, very tough, I think, for Howard to be able to get to the outside. Damian Gillespie will punt this one away. Corey Banks back deep to receive. That one almost blocked. Banks touched it. It's on the ground, and it will be pushed out of bounds. He could not handle it. So when we come back, it'll be A&T ball. The Aggies lead it 3-0 here on ESPN3. Fake stick. North Carolina A&T will begin its second drive from scrimmage with Khalil Carter has the quarterback and John Main Martin the single back to his right quarterback keeper Carter able to scamper ahead for about four it's quick to see and we talked about it on that first drive a, a lot of play fakes read option type things with Martin with Carter and then what happens is you start to get into the edge the end the linebackers crash and then you're able to throw over the top the two outstanding receivers for the Aggies you know, and, and Bell and Leslie, and don't forget about Banks. So a lot of variety in this Aggie offense, and Howard's got to be able to stand that test. Second and six for A&T. Martin takes the handoff. Around the corner he goes. Breaks free. Here he goes to the promised land. Jamaine Martin. Give him six. Nothing, North Carolina a and as John Main Martin put it into second gear. Well, we told you he had eight touchdown runs, 20 yards or better. Just add this, make this to number nine when we break to the outside. He's got too much speed, too much power. Great job by the offensive line of North Carolina a t to give him the crease. Point after is good, and away we go. 10 nothing, North Carolina a and as the Aggies have been able to score on both of their drives so far in this game. 9.23 to go in the first. There's a two-play 69-yard drive in 47 seconds. Stan, this is typically a team that works slowly and methodically down the field, averaging 34 minutes and 21 seconds of possession time per game. Today, it might be a different story because they're in the end zone so much. But you've got a, a player that's very explosive. That was the 11th touchdown the Aggies have scored this year. Actually, they're 12th now, but they've scored between one and five plays. They have the ability to explode. They can do that. The ninth touchdown this season with Miami State University scored under two minutes. And Jermaine Martin just does it so many different ways. He gave him one block, he bounces to the outside, and it was as the TV people like to say, give him six. It'll be Jermichael Jones and Dedrick Parson back deep to receive the Ruiz kick. Parson tracks it down. Across the 20. Ball is loose after the big hit, but it's recovered by Howard. Oh, my goodness gracious. What a pop on that one couple of things you need to think about today. Number one, A&T lost last week. They are not in a good mood. Number two is homecoming. And number three, this is one of the top-rated teams in the country, and they're playing like that. Big hit right there. Helmet on football. Fortunately, it bounces in Howard's way. But the Aggies, I think, are a little focused this afternoon to play well. And it was Amir McNeil on that tackle. As Quinton Williams takes the snap. Plus from the pocket, tucks it, runs it, and is thrown down to the grass. Quinton Williams, in five games played so far, 577 yards passing, six touchdowns, three interceptions. 
And, and he had a really nice game two starts ago against Bethune Cookman, where he threw for for 179 yards and, and had three touchdowns. And in their last game against Howard, I mean against Norfolk, you know, threw the ball well and ran the ball particularly well, 63 yards on the ground and 123 passes. So this guy again. Rustic did really think he would play a lot this year. He had thrown into the start of the He's done that, but he hasn't seen a defense, I don't think, like the Aggie defense is having to play against today. Hopefully it's third down, able to complete the pass to the outside for Ailey. And that will be enough for a first down, converting just for the 14th time this season on third down for the Bison. We'll we talk a lot about Carson and a lot about Williams, but one of the guys I think you need to keep your eye on today for Howard is number 11, Jordan Allen. He does a lot of things. He's going to kick off today. He's your motion man, a little slot receiver. Does a good job running routes. That pass completed to the outside. It was Kyle Anthony. The leading receiver, preseason MEAC first team selection. Had two grabs and a touchdown two weeks ago against Norfolk State. What you like about Anthony is his size. Goes about 210 pounds. He's 6'3", runs some really good routes. His 43rd reception of the season. I think he's got to be that other part of the offense for Howard this afternoon. The handoff bottled up right near that first down marker. It's going to be awfully close depending on the spot. And it looks like a first down has been granted to the Bison. Able to keep this drive going. And, and if you're Howard, I think one of the things you've got to be able to do this afternoon is control the tempo. You, you got hit in the mouth real quick, but now you've got to be able to settle in, have a 10, 12 play drive to keep the team off the field. Good run. The keeper. And Williams able to earn the first down after having his legs taken out from under him. Wayne Williams. Going off some great decision making here earlier. Great job again by Williams. There's the fake. Gets a nice block to the outside there. And is able to cut it up, put it up there, and pick up 9 or 10 yards. And again, I, I like the rhythm right now we're seeing out of Howard. Carson takes the handoff. Ball on the deck. And it's recovered by the Bison. Andrew Carson. The Philadelphia, Pennsylvania native, not known for putting the ball on the ground. Now, it doesn't fumble a lot, but Cornwell there, jolly on the spot to get their recovery. And you see that offensive line, and, and Phillips, uh, number number 78, their big tackle goes about 265. Prince to center goes about 275. But they've given up a lot of sacks. And there's another sack. It's the 39th of the season allowed by Howard. And think about what we just said. They've given up almost 40 sacks this season. They've had four ball games where they've given up five or more. And it's a big offensive line. They don't necessarily move too well. They'll do a good job with the initial block. And that time, the a and front four just too good, too quick. Third and 13 for the Bison. Ailey lined up at the bottom of your screen. He'll step onto the line. Williams drops back, looking, has plenty of time, and completes the pass to Anthony. And that is just shy of that first down marker. I think it's going to be a first down. I think forward progress. He, the line to gain was a 35. I thought he caught the ball right at the 35. They're going to move the chains. And they did indeed move the chains. And it will be good for a first down. First and 10 from the 35 for the Bison. And again, one of the things that uh, Howard's had some success runs, those little 8, 10-yard routes, trying to either do the slant or, in this case, a comebacker to the big wide receiver in Anthony. Quarterback keeper, Williams, across the 25, stumbles, and will lean forward out of bounds around the 23. The Bison putting together a solid drive here late in the first quarter. They're a team that has, hasn't scored a lot of points a lot of times. I think their largest point total this year has been 30 points. But they can score 29 actually against Bethune Cookman in a loss. And they have some ability. But this is one of those games where they've got to be very patient and be very smart with the football. Williams to the air. Lofts it for the end zone. And... Anthony comes down with it. Did he get it in bounds? Haven't seen a signal yet. Have not seen a signal. I still haven't seen a signal. It looks like it's going to be incomplete. 
And the call is incomplete. That was awfully close. Let's take a look again. Now, does he have possession of the football or a foot down? Boom. Right there. No, he's out of bounds. He fell Clearly out of over bounds. He, he, got, well, he, do, he dove, and, and uh, that's a good, good call by the officials. Terrific effort, though, from the senior out of Miramar, Florida. Second and ten for Howard. Williams drops back. Quick pass to Anthony on the fade. And that will fall incomplete. Matchup and one of the matchups I think everybody in the act would love to see this afternoon is Mac McCain. Glad to have him back on the field. The Rangers fan after coming off the knee surgery from a season ago. Been a little slow, was involved in a fumble recovery a week ago, but Mac McCain matched up against Kyle Anthony. It's something you need to keep your eye on as this ball game goes on 29 versus 81. Mac McCain, an All American. It's third and 10. Williams, quick drop. The screen to Parson. Behind his blocker and is able to gain the first down and keep the drive alive. Spencer, absolutely a great call by Mark Bako, the offensive coordinator for the Howard Bison. You know there's going to be pressure. It's a third down situation. Williams stays in there and drops it off to the receiver slash running back Parson. Good enough for another Howard first down. First and 10 from the 12. Out of the gun. Looking for Anthony. And it is incomplete, but a flag on the play. There's that matchup we were talking about. This time it was one-on-one -on -one with Amir McNeil. Both of them are doing a little hand fight. I'll be interested to see if they're going to say offensive pass interference or is it going to be a defensive pass interference or hold. Both of them were battling as the receiver caught the ball and go down to the ground. Waiting for the call from Rory Bernard. They went ahead and picked up the flag. Well, both of them were hand fighting. Both of them were getting position. So I can understand that no one gained an advantage, and the pass was catchable but yet incomplete because the receiver was out of bounds. So a good bit of officiating on the case of, of these guys this time. Second and ten. Haley in the slot. Williams throws and overshoots his receiver, Thomas B. Something to keep in mind if you're a Howard fan. 18 times touchdown. So they, they've had some success in the red zone. This would be huge for them to get some points on the board. It'll be third and ten. Alien motion. Quarterback keeper on the option. Williams has a block to the corner of the end zone. Give him six. Touchdown, Howard. Quinton Williams' second rushing touchdown of the season. Makes it a 10-6 ball game. Great job here at the point of attack. Watch this offensive line. Block there. There's the fake. There's motion. You get Conwell leading the way. You get another block there. And then the speed of the young quarterback gets to the outside. And this Aggie crowd's kind of quiet right now as Howard gets on the board. And because place kicker Nick Ferris is out today, Howard will line up and go for two. Empty backfield for Williams. The freshman looking to go to the air. And that one is knocked away by Antoine Wilder. 16 play, 78-yard drive in 542 makes it a 10-6 game. We'll be back after this on ESPN3. Now we're here early, and I think you might have an idea of what time it is, but if you don't, let me help you out. Now as Aggies, we are taught to have pride in everything, all aspects of life, everything that we produce, and that even translates to our tailpiece. However, there can only be one spot at the top, right? Now let's see who actually has the first place tailgate. Hey, 
Yeah, we could do some ribs up over here. We're doing some fried ribs today. Something new. Oh, we gotta put some chicken wings, burgers, sausage dogs, sauce. We come out to every home game. I ain't missed a home game in 20 years. It reminds me of the camaraderie shit that we had when we was playing ball. We still together, the same guy. We play it together, play ball together, and we're gonna die together. Look, here we go. Yes, we do. Every game, every year. Who comes, we serve. Steak. The sidelines, Lou Williams, what do you have? We'll go ahead and stay up here. It'll be Banks and Pope Jack for a and The last one, 65 yards. He is averaging an FCS Haley best will nine yards this one off. per carry. We'll keep it low. And that one is covered up and taken to the ground by Keandre Jones. With your kickers out, your punter out, you've got a backup guy. You should expect to have a great field position. And just something, too, as, as you, you, Aggie fans know, the last nine years, They've had a punt or kickoff return this year. They have not. This could be the ball game where they get that punt or kickoff. Just keep that in the back of your mind. So if it happens, you can say, well, Stan, he'll kill me. <laughs> the change of pace back is in. Kashawn Baker, the senior from Farmville, North Carolina, had a touchdown against FAMU on Sunday. Take the handoff on first down and is able to gain a couple. We talked about it a moment ago, but it's worth worth noting. This a and front averages about 305, 307 pounds per man. So when it's warm afternoon like it is and the emotion, they're going to just try to lean on you, give your backs a little bit of a hold. They saw it a moment ago, and you saw Martin have some success. Carter to the air on second down. Tried to hit Elijah Bell. Some tight coverage provided by Smith. Now, Jalen Smith... That's five breakups. You mentioned a, a couple of tackles against Norfolk State. Very good, very athletic. A lot of these guys in this Howard team are very young, are freshmen and sophomores. You look at their depth chart, most of the big name players are really good. They're going to get better and better as you go. But nice coverage that time against Bell. This is a Howard defense that allowed 649 total yards of offense to Norfolk State two weeks ago. Looks like the off week in the schedule, they're able to tighten some things up. Bell in motion. Third down, here's Carter, rushes on, steps up in the pocket, tucks it, runs it, and he is brought down on the other side of the 40, which means Carter four is in the box, and the punt team will have to come on. Ray Williams, a free safety, who leads his Bison team in tackles with 37, comes up from the spot. He's kind of playing as a spy a little bit against Carter, recognizes it, and actually gives him about a two-yard pickup. But another good job defensively. One of the things you mentioned is that you know the defense is a little better. When they had the week off, they got some guys healed. They worked on certain things, and this is how you want to see your team play after a bye week. Very aggressive and attacking mode. And so far, I'm very impressed with the way the defense has stood up for Howard. Michael Rivers to punt. Dedrick Parson awaits the punt around the 15. It'll roll inside the 20 to the 13, where it will be down. So a nice punt by Michael Rivers. That's his 11th punt inside the 20 this season. So the Howard offense will take the field for the third time today. 2-11 remaining in the first quarter in a one-score game. Coming off of a 16-play touchdown drive. Anthony and Ailey will be at the bottom of your screen. Williams hands it off to Parson. He's able to plow ahead for a few. Parson's doing a really nice job, as we kind of expected him to do. Miak, rookie of the year a season ago, reading his blockers, trying to find a hole, being patient, being smart, head up, eyes up. And, and you're able to, you know, get out of a hole. It's not a big game. You pick up about three yards of the play, get three yards of pop, you're in good shape. 
Second and seven. Under pressure, escapes from Coates, and is finally gang tackled down to the grass after a loss of one. <laughs> <laughs> and, and you talk about guys that are trying to make a play. Justin Cates, 94, had his B line on the quarterback, missed him, and he was still upset after his guys brought the, the quarterback down. But you like that aggressive, that end of that third down situation. Spencer, we've talked about it, and this Howard football team has had a modicum of success today on third down going into the season. 33 of 106, which was seventh best in the conference. Got to be able to convert, keep this drive going, keep the momentum going. A&T allowing just 32% of third down conversions as Mac McCain able to swap that one out of the air. Well, he was one of those X-Factor guys that we talked about before the ball game. Somebody to keep your eyes on after being out so much of this season. Healthy, active. We know him from his big-time interceptions against Charlotte two years ago for 100 yards, against East Carolina last year for over 100 yards. We had to see him back there, and all he's going to do is add strength to the defense. Get his head on that two. That punt is almost blocked. It'll be short. A&T will avoid fielding it. It'll be down at the 46, and there's a flag on the play. As it looks like Damian Gillespie is down. And what we don't know right now, we'll have to wait for was this roughing the kicker or running the kicker. There's a fourth down and eight. So we're running in the kicker would only be a five yard variety. Running into the kicker. Defense. Five-yard penalty, re-kick, fourth down. So that so makes it a fourth down and three. And, and if you're a &T, be a little smarter. You can be aggressive because there's going to be a five-yard penalty, but you don't necessarily know that. But if you're a &T, this is one of those chances now. You've got a kicker that's back there, could be the second kicker, and he's going to be shaky. So you're thinking about a little pseudo rush and then set up the return. Remember what I told you, they hadn't got a kick return all season. This one's short. And the ball will be down in the same exact place, the 46-yard line. So the A&T offense will take the field. That's Khalil Carter. Will step in as the quarterback. John May Martin is back out on the field. It'll be first down and ten. Bell and Banks as the twin wide receivers to the top of the screen. Martin in motion. Carter sets up the screen pass. Hits Bell, and he is wrapped up and brought down immediately by Quante Anderson. The freshman from Virginia Beach. That timing just a little bit off on that play. Had the screen set up. Try to get the one of your outstanding receivers, but the ball comes out of Carter's hands a little high, and it gives the defender a chance to come up and make the play. Good, good tackle. Carter to the air. Has Bell in stride to the 25. Still going inside the 20, and the Aggies are into the red zone. You throw the ball to Elijah Bell too many times. Something good's going to happen. And the outstanding receivers, not only in the FCS, the but certainly in the first football history, comes up with a big catch and another Aggie first down. At the end of the first quarter of action, A&T leading Howard 10 to 6. We'll be back after this on ESPN3. Oh, that's how steak is done. Longhorn Steakhouse. You can't fake steak. One of the best bands in all the land. One of the best. <laughs> I, I, I'm like in the, in the middle of that. I'm not either. I don't, do, I don't do that. I don't do that. There ain't, I can only think of two or three that can hold a candle to them. I'm not even going to go there. But I tell you what, if you think that they're good now, and a band can blow you away in a stand, you know they're good. But the halftime show they're going to put on today, man. I tell you what, and this is what this uh, homecoming is all about. It's a homecoming from the crowd, man. This place is packed. Because you look, the only homecoming I know you go to. 
you got 30,000 fans in the stadium and 35, 40,000 outside the stadium. <laughs> and they're, and all, they're all having, and they're all having time, a good time. Right? Yeah. But this place is absolutely packed. The game has been sold out for more than a month. Love it. <laughs> Two back set for A and T. First down and ten for the Yankees. And the Baker able to get himself down to the 15. When you see the two backs set a lot of times, they're going to put a, a receiver or a back in motion. Baker's coming into the ball game, having caught four passes. And that's just the reason. A, a long running play. Learn how to get your backs in the space that can do some damage. We've seen what Martin can do with a hole. That time Baker, not able to really pick, pick it far, but this is just something that you got to keep in mind. Now you go three wide to the, to the field side. So you think short passes, something over the top, are always Martin. Second and seven for a and Jamaine Martin patiently waits for a hole, doesn't find it, and he is dragged down by Quentin Hill. Good job by Quentin Hill, the middle linebacker for the Howard Bison. Another one of those young guys that can make some plays only a junior, but has the athletic ability to run from sideline to sideline. Solid tackle there. So a third and long for the Aggies. a and has converted 54.5% of their third down opportunities so far this season. 0 for 2 today. Carter looking to throw, has nowhere to go. Ball is loose, he recovered it. And that will set the Aggies back to the 33. And they were trying to set up that screen pass again. Not able to do it. And a nice job defensively by John Baptiste. Elton John Baptiste. Only another. How many times are we going to say it today? A freshman for the Howard Boys. Stayed in his rush lane. Did a good job of putting pressure on Carter and forcing the fumble and taking him down. He's on for the 48 yard field goal attempt. He's 36. In between 40 and 49 yards this year. <laughs> Snap is down. The kick on the way. It has the distance and it's through. 13 to 6. AT on top. Stan, you and I have seen the ball where he's hit some big field goals before. Well, that big one he had his career long against Elon to win the first game of the season, certainly good. He could have made that for an extra 15 or 20 yards, and you give Howard a lot of credit to get his stuff. That was only Howard's seventh sack of the season, believe it or not, after giving up 37, only the seventh defensive sack, and able to get that play. 13 to 6, AT on top. We'll take a timeout right here on ESPN3. That's how steak is done. Longhorn Steakhouse. You can't fake steak. North Carolina a and takes a 13-6 lead. With 12.54 remaining in the first half. No over leads. Just split the uprights in the 48-yard field goal. We'll send this one deep. Parson will field it just shy of the goal line. And he is stopped at the 16. On the carry. So many they're playing well right they're playing the spot that's the play he's going away from the court field you got to let that kick roll on in the end zone pick up those extra 15 yards let your drive start at the 25 as opposed to the eight. 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 16 you put yourself behind the eight ball and it makes it a little bit like what how we been able to do with quarterback keepers the dive and tosses to to pass it but you're going to have to show more variety in your offense to keep a t off balance, I think. Williams working out of the shotgun. The jet sweep to Parson. And he is shoved out of bounds by Wilder. And that's that variety of speech that you're talking about. You know that the rush is coming up for you. Try to make the defense if he is not set in the edge or not trying to go inside too far. You can see there's a jet sweep motion, just merely misses a tackle. And you've got a guy in Parsons who has the speed to get to the outside. And he makes a positive play of six yards. Comes up second and four for the Bison. Option to the left. 
Williams keeps it, and he is shoved to the ground by the Williams, 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 Williams
And again, there's so much movement anticipation trying to get off. That time you saw more more movement with it. And it goes in motion. They're moving down one play. Him. That's also given him an indicator, Williams, of what they are in man or in zone. They see what would look like zone coverage. They zone with rush. Similar formation again. Yankees are coming. Williams takes the snap. Pressure's on. And he's sacked. Jacob Roberts slipped on through and was able to bring Quinn Williams down. And when they notice the motion at times, they adjust to the strong side of the field, which would have been a tight end side. And you've got to control your gap, and they don't do that. And it's easy rush right there, a straight line. 57 and uh, Roberts, and Roberts has been very active this entire afternoon. Gets the big sack, and fourth down goes first down for him, too. So the Aggies will begin this drive from their own 45. Zach Leslie will be the wide receiver closest to the a &T bench. Hand off to Martin. Turns up field. And there he goes again. John A. Martin. In for six. The Coastal Carolina transfer. His 14th rushing touchdown of the season. Don't read. Take your time. Read it. Every guy has got a man on a man. Good clock to the outside that time by Lockhart. And you're running to the field side, and it doesn't take a lot. Yeah, watch this. Which block you by Anthony? 84 block. Boom. Takes the guy out. There's a natural team. And if you give Martin just a second and a seed, he's going to take it to the house. Well, Ruiz on for the extra point. Hold it down. Kick. He's good. Oh, good. 23. Aggies on top. You mentioned Prinzel Lockhart, the tight end with the clock. That is one of the strong suits that Sam Washington mentioned to us earlier this week. Well, Quinzo Lockhart can do it all. He can block, he can catch, and he's a tremendous leader. Not caught a lot of passes, but in their offense, if you can block and then do some downfield things, you're going to be okay. And Lockhart and the rest of the offensive line, Legron and Keys on that right side, did a really nice job of just finding that scene, finding an area. And the way AT has been able to operate out of their zone reads, quarterback keeper, boom, as a keeper, he puts it the last moment at the mess point. You're going to have some success if your offensive line, the 305 pound by average line, they did a great job then. It doesn't take a lot of time for you to get in the end zone if you're an Aggie fan today. So back deep this time for Howard to receive the kick. It'll be Jermichael Jones. <laughs> And Dominic Logan Neely. Logan Neely gets thrown down right around the 32. Another nice return for the freshman from Hyattsville, Maryland. Just think about how games can turn. Howard's moving. They have two opportunities for a fourth down play. Can't get them up and get the defense up. They cause a penalty. You get a blitz. You get a tackle by Roberts. A sack. Changes the momentum, changes the possession. One play later, boom, another big explosion play touchdown. And so Howard feeling kind of, okay, we got a chance at this thing now. Now doubt begins to creep in because a t playing well on offense, playing well on defense, playing well on special teams. Play action. Williams able to complete the pass to Anthony. And he is tackled almost immediately by Jalen Bethel. Nice call that time on first down. The action fake going away. Send your tight end across the formation. It's a nice little easy pass. He gives the quarterback some confidence and gets you into a nice workable second down situation. You do a lot of things in second and two. Second and two from the 39. Twins right for the Bison. Williams to the air. Leads Anthony a little too far. They, they moved Williams around a lot. That time it was a slide. And really had one-on-one -on -one coverage. 
to the inside. Good job defending it and not giving up on the play with Bethea, but that's a pass. That I'm not really 100% certain that Anthony saw because he kind of jogged through the, put the play and then all of a sudden accelerates at the last moment. But that, that's a pass that probably should have been completed. Better pass, better catch. And for a freshman who was not the starter in training camp, Howard able to reach pretty deep into the playbook here. Bison keep it on the ground, and that a and defense stands tall. Well, a lot, of, flag comes yeah, in. a lot of the craziness from the week ago. McNeil was in a pushing and shoving match with uh, Jermichael Jones. I think that was Jones, 13. No, it was 14. I'm sorry, it was Gillespie. And they, they got in each other's face, and then you could see where uh, he pushed him down. So that should be on a &T. But it may not. Let's see. Let them, let be too sure. After the play, unsportsmanlike conduct, defense, number 24, taunting. That is number 24's first unsportsmanlike foul of the game and results in an automatic first down. And remember what happened last week in the game against Florida a and in addition to some players being ejected. Both teams at halftime were given an unsportsmanlike penalty. But you had one in the first half, and that's why you had a couple guys. I think Bell was one of those guys that ended up being kicked out of the ball game. And Mac McCain. And Mac McCain because of that. And, and so you've got to be smarter in that. And that's just not a smart play by a guy that, that's, a, that's a, one of the leaders of this team in McNeil, a sophomore from down in Scotland County, Larnburg. Williams rolls out, and this one falls incomplete. I don't know if you saw this, Stan. But Sam Washington sent the man deal right to the rock that we told him, get off the sideline, time yeah. to go. Well, we went through this last week. Right. We went through the whole thing. And, you, and, you know, we're not trying to beat this up, but Sam addressed a lot of this to us individually and to the media on Monday and Tuesday about it wasn't happening the way his guys responded to some things. And he apologized to the Yankee fans, and that took a lot of class. Hey, this is not the type of program we're going to be. We're a top-ranked team. We're the number one team in HBCU football. We have better standards than that. So I, I commend him for putting him on the bench. Parson around the corner. Able to chug ahead for about eight. Strong run for the 2018 MEAC Rookie of the Year. When this game is over. Anton Wilder and, and Parsons are going to certainly be able to sit down and talk because they have bumped heads on several occasions early in this football game. Big, solid tap on time by Wilder. And now Howard, I think this has got to be two-play territory for them. If they don't get the first down on this third down and two, you've got to try to go for the fourth down. All spotted at the 37 of A&T. Pistol formation. Play action. And that ball was knocked down. And for Nate McDaniel was in the face of the freshman QB. McDaniel goes about 285 and 6'3", six, 6'4". Six, and he's got long arms. And so the quarterback is not very big. In this case, Williams is at 6'4". He's got to get outside that arm. He's got to get better leverage. That was an easy deflection by the, the, the sophomore McDaniel. Watch this again. No outside leverage, get his hands up very easy. You've got to get your shoulder around to find that little passing window. Here we go. Healy the motion, man. Williams bobbles the snap, and he is stuffed. Turnover on down. Bad snap. Snap threw everything off just a bit. Media timeout. 20 to 6. AT on top. We'll be back after these messages right here on ESPN3. and 10 for North Carolina a &T from their own 40-yard line. Two back set. <laughs> Baker takes the handoff, spins out of the first tackle, and falls to the grass after a gain of two. We, we talked about this at the beginning of the ball game and Howard have given up a lot of points, 83 in the first quarter. They've given up 122 in the, in the second quarter of ball games. The Aggies have had their biggest scoring quarter of 79 in the second quarter. So if you play by the numbers, this could be a big quarter for Ante. So far, they have been able to score. But i got to give Howard's defense, because of those numbers, a big hand. They've done a really good job of being aggressive and, and make a &T have to work. Two big running plays by Martin capped off everything so far. Carter to Elijah Bell. A flag flies in, but Bell will go into the end zone. 
One of the things with this A&T football team, when they're working on both weapons, you've got the ability to run the football or throw the ball, and you see Elijah Bell passing away for this call. Offense, number 13, 15-yard penalty from the previous spot, still second down. And they're going to call Bell for pass interference, so apparently as he was working his route or the ball was in the air, he made contact with the defender. There was a lot of separation. Yeah. Elijah Bell showing that versatility. We may not be able to see it on this replay. But there's the separation, and it's the way we go. But we'll keep that in the archives. And Second down down. Time. Twins left and right. Second and long. Pressure on from the Bison. Carter lofts one to the air and is able to complete the pass at the 40. It's Zach Leslie. <laughs> Great concentration and a darn near perfect pass by Carter. Zach Leslie, who was huge last week in the absence of Bell with the 11 receptions, has a defender on him, but this is a perfectly thrown football by Carter. And watch Leslie, great concentration, goes up and makes the play. First and 10, a and from the 39. Aggies keep it on the ground. Baker with a nifty move across the 35, down to the 30, and holds on to the football. One two combination of Martin and Baker, guys that can, can go inside and, and bounce out as well. You take, you take Baker, you take Paul, because you take a look here, you go inside, show your head, show your shoulder, and then go inside and accelerate. Martin, Baker, and Carter are combined for almost 1,300 of the 1,500 rushing yards for this Aggie team. Very difficult to defend all three of those guys. Second and one for A&T from the Howard 30. Play action. Carter looking, takes the hit, throws over the seam, and it's just a little too high for Leslie this time. Good the 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 job early in the ball game on run defense. Yeah. Recognizing that even though you've had the two big runs by Martin, this time trying to go over the top, pass interference on one, and a ball that just kind of sailed just a little bit. Carter intended for the six foot three inch junior Leslie. We've got both guys on the same side with Leslie in the slot. Hand off to Baker. And he's able to get the first down. A nice block by William Simpson. The fullback at the Elizabeth Simpson. Oh, Simpson doesn't carry the ball very much. Only his fourth carry this season for about 11 yards. But you know he's in there to block. He takes up a lot of space. Almost 300 pounders. So he's an extra blocking, extra lineman. But you can use it for those short yardage plays. And when you put the two wide receivers like you had a moment ago on the same side of the field, that's going to open up the inside a little bit. Elijah Bell all by his lonesome on the short side. Carter around the corner the other way. He's got the 10, the 5, and into the end zone. Give him 6. Touchdown, a and Khalil Carter with his second rushing touchdown of the season. Watch this. There's a fake inside. Everybody goes for the dive guy, and it's just clear sailing. Watch him. He kind of slows down at the end because it's like, that's too easy. We don't even have that when we do a walkthrough. But a great job by the offensive line for North Carolina A&T State University and a big-time run once again by Carter. Khalil Carter, a 28 the 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 end zone. Almost untouched. Six. Got a feeling today that these guys here, ROTC, might be doing a lot of push-ups. They're going to have an interesting afternoon, it appears. <laughs> the most impressive part of that drive to me 
partner is that John Mayne Martin is not on the field. Well, that's the versatility of this football team. And you, you mentioned it earlier that the change of pace back, that being Baker, you had a dose of Baker, picked up the nine-yard run, try to throw a second down, don't get it inside, go Simpson, go to Baker again. And with North Carolina and two states playing the way they need to play, they're running the football. There's a lot of runs, a lot of runs, but it's a lot of variety of runs. It's inside the tackles, it's outside, it's option plays. All that does is sets up the passing game a little bit. Right now, you got to be very impressed if you're an Aggie fan with the way this offense is, is performing. Long kickoff from Ruiz. This one bobbled at the goal line, and it's picked up by Logan Neely, who is slammed down inside the 10. Again, you got to understand the situation. Ball kicked right at you. Let it go, go in the end zone. Take it to 25. The ball will take your eye for a second. And what you do now with your special teams is you put your team at a definite disadvantage. You can play field games by A&T. Take the ball there, Logan Nealon. Bump, bump sits in there again. If you hesitate in this football game, you're definitely going to be lost. Haley, the motion man. The handoff to Parson. And he is stopped right around the line of scrimmage. Maybe lost a couple inches. If I'm Howard right now with four minutes to go, and you've been hit in the mouth. You always try to get a sustained drive. Get the clock on. Don't let A&T use those timeouts and get to the half. You get the ball back to begin the second second half of the game and try to get some momentum, but don't make any mistakes right now. Williams is sacked. That's easier said than done. The A&T's pinned their ears back and know you've got to throw the football. Justin Cates comes off the pile. Cates has been very active all afternoon. You can take a look there. 94 yards about. It's on the other side. So you run the, run the two-man game, not controlling the gap. That was McGill. Excuse me, that coming inside. And Jacobs, I'm sorry. Williams releases quickly, completes the pass. He's got Cornwell. He was able to rush ahead to the 13 where he's going. The pass is complete. Nice reception by Cornwell, not enough for the first down. A big time tackle by Joseph Stuckey. Well, Stan, you mentioned at the beginning of this job that Howard needed a similar possession for the guys the one that they scored the touchdown on the 16 play drive and set to three and out. And now A&T. Just, 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 you, you're smelling it right now and you're hitting it. And A&T's going to get the ball in great field position, you got to think. Banks will track it down, turns. Will evade the first batch of tacklers and is dropped at the 35. The ball was down, according to the side judge, Terry Hinn. The Banks lost about seven or eight yards just by retreating. Now, again, Good job kick coverage by the special team for Howard. I think you're going to get plus territory in the, in the turn. Still relatively good field position. They'll start to drive to 35, but a nice defensively by Howard. Wait to see who a t breaks the huddle with. It'll be Jamain Martin as the tailback. For Sam Washington's ball club. Aggie so far today with 167 yards on the ground. The wind starting to pick up here at BB&T Stadium. Carter throws and leads Bell just a little too far, right around the 45. Second and 10 from the 45. Absolutely perfect day for football here on the east side of Greensboro. Around 75 degrees in late October. Doubles formation for the Aggies. Option. Carter keeps it and runs into that defensive front of the Bison. So how we can stop that game? 
get the ball back with a minute and some change, and, and you you get your chance again. The same scenario we talked about a moment ago. So if, if you're Howard, this is a huge third down call for you defensively. Third down at about eight. Antique looks like they're going to go into trips formation. So you've always got to be aware of the dig routes and the little and the deep throws for uh, Bell or either Leslie. Third and eight from the 37. It's Carter looking, has plenty of time, throws one for Leslie, who hauls it in. Well, well, not, so much, <laughs> not so much right, but in fact, you're in a third down and long. You're locked in man coverage with a big receiver. He gets straight inside leverage. And, and you mentioned it's getting a little windy, so the ball flutters just a little bit, but just that's another great job in, to one of these outstanding AT receivers, Zach Leslie. Twins left and right. Banks is the slot man left. Here's Carter from the pocket. Swings one down the sideline, and it's hauled in by Elijah Bell. Give him six. Touchdown, Aggies. I'll tell you what. Carter has thrown some excellent passes today. I don't think this one may be any better. Look at this. Throws it, drops it right in. Great concentration by Bell. Catches it, knows the defender's on him. Again, you're in man coverage, and it's hard to cover some of these wide receivers. This is a nicely placed football to the outside. Not a lot you can do if you're the defensive back. Jalen Smith and another Aggie touchdown. And Ruiz will score on the PAT. 34 to 6. Aggies with the lead. 108 to me in the first half. Elijah Bell, the AT career leader for touchdown receptions, now with 27. He's also the leader in receiving yards and receptions as a whole. Well, he's moving faster and faster up the all-time MEAC touchdown receiving record. Jaquay Nunley holds that record at 38. Bale now with his 28th touchdown, I think he is, doing the math from that thing. So he's getting closer and closer to Nunley, who had an outstanding career. Back in the early 2000s at the Florida a and But this is another great throw by Carter. A little wild here because of the wind, but perfectly placed. And nothing that Smith the defender for doing. And to the Aggie faithful at homecoming, something to cheer about, something to dance about. Well, that's funny to dance to as the Blue Boy Lightning Machine takes the field at the half. Logan Neely will step into the end zone. And will step Ball's across out. the got goal line. Now he's got to go. And he's dropped shy of the 15. That's the third poor decision on the kickoff now for the Bison. And it looks like there's an injured Aggie on the play. It's Jacob Roberts who's been an absolute Time out machine for an injured player. He's been on the defense today. See, if your momentum carries you into the end zone, that's part one of the rule. The second part is if you get the football and you take it past the goal line and advance, now the ball is in play. If you go backwards, it would have been a safety. It would have been a possible touchdown. So, again, you're right. That's the third time this afternoon where, you know, Howard's not been aware of the position of the football, where the players are, and trying to make those positive plays. I understand you want to try to make something out of a return. Sometimes you got to be just a little bit more cautious in what you're doing. Didn't work out for him, and now very much a similar scenario that we said a few moments ago before Andy's last touchdown. We got about a minute to say the play. Don't make any mistakes. It's for goodness sake, don't give AT the football back. The Aggies in the midst of the longest win streak against Howard in this series. Stands at five games heading into this one. If you're an AT fan or a Howard fan, you know of this longtime football robbery. You can see they beat each other up, up and down the East Coast and bring up in DC. And due to scheduling court for what Howard is not playing, so this has been a gap for about three seasons um, when they didn't play, so they keep getting the robbery back. Good for AT so far. Parson. 
Able to spin out of the first half. And and the the first down. And around the 17. Second down and seven. Second, second and seven for Howard. Pressure's on from a &T. Quickly releases, completes the pass. He's got Cornwell, and he was wrapped up almost immediately, and now a flag flies in late. Wayne's pass is complete. To number 87. So we'll wait to hear from Rory Bernard, a white cat today. Personal foul, late hit, defense, number nine, 15-yard penalty from the end of the run, automatic, first down. So Antoine Wilder. We had a dead ball foul. What you doing? With the foul, as uh, Rory Bernard accidentally well, left his microphone fit. That's off. okay, though. You can hear it. It's a dead ball foul. It's an exact 10 situation. So that's after the play, you add 10 yards to that. So, I mean, every now and then, you know, it's really kind of good to hear what the mics, what the officials are saying when they don't expect you to hear. They're doing their job. Some terrific insight right there. Yeah, it is. It really is. I mean, the officials, and I know how hard they work. They go to clinics, what they do, the evaluation process. You're getting very, very solid officials. The problem is a lot of people who complain about it and don't know the rules. <laughs> I mean, that's the truth. But these guys are doing a good job today. It's been a clean, well-officiated college football game. We have a timeout on the field. Taken by Howard. Timeout, Howard. Second charge timeout. 30 seconds. Stan, if you're the Bison and you're Ron Prince, get me, get me. I can tell you real quick. I can save you the question. Okay. Get me into the locker room. <laughs> That's quickly, what I was going to ask. As quickly, I'll say it. As quickly and as easily as I can. So then why take the time out? To tell them that. Okay. <laughs> Just mean, to make sure your young kids know. Don't make any mistakes. Don't, don't do anything. I, I wouldn't mind an explosion play. We try to go deep. Maybe we can get something on the board. But right now, if, if you're, if you're Howard, you're not doing a good job of execution. And that's, the, that's, that's the bottom line. You've had some penalties when you needed to make some plays. ANT's throwing some balls when you've had decent coverage, didn't make plays. I want to get out of there with no mistake. Let's go have a fumble. Let's go have an interception. Let's go take a sack, which makes us have to get the football up. And ANT may get one more up there. But you know, if you're within 45 yards, you're in Ruiz here. How much does it hurt Howard that Nick Ferris, the place kicker, is out today and you don't really have a field goal game? Not right now, it doesn't, because you're not in field position. It, it doesn't. It, it can, it should, but right now you got to get 40 yards. Williams, scampers, tucks, runs. He's ahead to the 45 and will step out of bounds. A nice play by the freshman. He has been very impressive today. It looks like he's, it really hurts in the run. Then he goes down the field. He's a, but that's a smart play. Didn't see anything there. Didn't force anything down the field. And then wisely goes out of bounds. So you live to fight another best. So you've got one, maybe two, maybe even three more plays remaining. Wins left. Kyle Anthony, the lone receiver, to the bottom of the screen. This one kept on the ground by Parson, and he is thrown to the grass at midfield. <laughs> Looking out of the pistol. Williams throwing. And that will do it for the first half. North Carolina A&T leading it 34 to 6. Let's go ahead and send it down to the sideline. Luke Williams is with Sam. North Carolina A&T Aggies. 34. Howard. 6.
Ammunition, prepare yourself for an exciting halftime performance. But right now, please focus your attention to the field. 34 to 6. North Carolina AT leads it. And we head into halftime here in Greensboro. We'll be back after this on ESPN3. What would you like the power to do? Back, it's halftime between Howard and North Carolina A&T. Joined now in studio by North Carolina A&T running back John Main Martin. John Main, thanks for joining me. No problem. Thanks for having me. Uh, you've got it written on your shirt. RBU, North Carolina A&T has put out some tremendous running backs over the years, and now you're the starter here in Greensboro. What has it been like for you to get the majority of the carries this season? Uh, you know, well, it's a big, you know, uh, it's like a chip. You know, you have a carry. Cartwright's legacy and, and Tariq Cohen's legacy, you know, it's been a lot of great running backs before me, so I feel like it's just me. Timeless machine. And I've just been following his steps, you know, he's been leading me through the way. Uh, your journey here has been interesting. You started at Coastal Carolina, uh, and you have this chance at redemption here at North Carolina A&T. What has uh, this journey been like for you? Uh, you know, it's just, it's all a blessing, you know. I, uh, I take it all as a learning opportunity, and I'm, I'm, I'm grateful. I'm thankful for it, you know, uh, and I wouldn't rather be anywhere else. Uh, you're a guy who cares a lot about family. Uh, you moved back to the Conway area in the middle of high school, and you wore number 30 and continue to wear so to uh, honor a family member. What, what is the story behind that, and, and how much does it mean to you to be able to honor somebody that meant so much to you? Right. Uh, well, number 30, it, it means a lot to me. You know, um, my pops, my dad's twin brother, he had a son. His name was Mark Twain Bellamy, and um, he passed away from cancer 2015, and uh, he was 18 years old. I was 17 years old, and, you know, that, that, that played a big part on me. You know, I went from seeing them all the time to not seeing them no more, and it it uh it took a a, a, a great toll on me. And uh, you know, ever since then, I was just like, you know, I'm gonna do it for him. You know, so that's why every time I touch the field, it's it's for Mark Twain. You know, that's everything I do is for Mark Twain, and uh, that's what that's 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 just what I do it for. Now, you have quite the interesting story. You're a running back, so obviously your hands are important. You need to be able to secure the football. Right. And yet, you can't feel anything in your left hand. How are you able to know when the football's there, what's going on, and how do you? How, how did this all come about? There, there's a crazy story behind it. Right. So uh, my freshman year in college, when I was at Coastal, you know, a bad storm had hit. So, you know, I, I'm from the Conway area, so I was... I went back home, you know, school got shut down, so we was trying to crank up a generator, the power got knocked out. So a uh, piece had broke off and while we was trying to crank it up, and a piece broke off and it slit the middle of my hand wow. and cut my nerves. So really from like the middle finger over, I can't really feel it. But as far as like on the field, you know, my adrenaline pumping, I probably can't feel nothing anyway. So. <laughs> It, it's not, it doesn't take, like, it's not a real big deal, you know. I just use it, run anyway. Uh, you earned MEAC honors last year as the backup. Uh, obviously a tremendous sign of respect from everybody else around the conference. Uh, what are your expectations for this year now that you're the guy that, that's leading that stable of running backs? Uh, celebration Bowl. That's what we want to do. I just want to win, you know. It don't matter if it's 100 yards on the season or – a thousand yards on the season, you know. I just, I just want to win. How many every yards I need for us to go to the Celebration Bowl and get another ring? Well, uh, you've had a, a season high at one point this year of 299 in a game. Uh, you've had some tremendous runs, uh, uh, an amazing touchdown run at Duke that we've been able to see. Uh, you've broken off some very long runs this year. Uh, what is it about those guys in front of you that are blocking for you that you've been able to find these holes? Oh, those guys right there, they're, 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 they're the whole part, they're the whole thing, they're the whole system. It doesn't know? work without them, does nah, it? I promise you it doesn't. <laughs> so, uh, basically, uh, everybody, and they're young. We only have one senior on the O-line, so, you know, that's the good thing. And uh, them boys, they just, 
relentless effort, you know. They never give up on a play. I'm running down the field 50, 60 yards down the field, and they're right there with me, you know. They're my guys right there. Where do you get your physicality from? It seems like you don't shy away from contact in between the tackles. Um, I don't know. I just feel like it's so much built-up anger <laughs> and aggression that it's just like, it's, it's whatever. I'm down for whatever. Do you thrive on that, though, uh, knowing that at that first point of contact, you still have more to give? Right, right. Oh, yeah. I'm like, yeah. When I, after that, I'm going to get up and I'm going to say, yeah, I'm here all day. You know, we're going to do this all day. <laughs> uh, you mentioned the Celebration Bowl. Uh, you've gotten to take part in, in that whole thing. What, what is that like for you being a player uh, in the Black College Football National Championship? Oh, it's a great feeling, you know. Uh, people dream to be here, you know. We, a lot of people don't make it. A lot of people not going to make it. So, you know, it's just a blessing just to be able to make it back to back to back, you know. And I just hope that we continue to do that, you know, stay focused just and get to it. Uh, as you continue to write the John Maine Martin story, uh, how would you like this chapter, the North Carolina A&T chapter, to end? Um, I just want to be known as a guy that, Ran the ball hard and, and, and finished the play strong, you know. Didn't get tackled a lot one-on-one -on -one and gave it all he had. Well, John Maiden, best of luck to you as you continue this journey. You. We'll be back with plenty more coming up at halftime. This is Howard and North Carolina A&T on ESPN3. Timeless Machine. The first is Sarah Nicole Rogers, a freshman trumpet player from Burlington, North Carolina, who is a criminal justice major. Next up is Michaela Williams. Michaela is a sophomore gold medal lightweight from Rayford, North Carolina, who's majoring in marketing supply chain management. World's never gotten enough of it, so we proudly bring you more of it. The new 911 Timeless Machine. Welcome back out to BB&T Stadium in Greensboro, North Carolina. North Carolina A&T leading Howard 34 to six. Stan, it seems like the Aggies playing with a little extra fire after their loss down at FAMU on Sunday. Well, that's what you expect. I mean, this is a team that an outstanding program. Obviously, we don't have to go through all that, but here's the thing, you get beat. You get beat a tough game away from home. You're coming back for your home fans. This was a very difficult mix if you were a Howard Bison to be able to overcome. Well, so far, they played well early, but just too strong too many times for the Aggies. Something that really blows your mind is the touchdown runs that the Antis had, 40-yard pass by Bell, the run by 28 yards, two Martin touchdowns. The 15 touchdowns this season A&T has scored. 20 yards or better, the explosiveness of this offense, the fact they're doing it in one play. So if I'm Howard, I know you're going to ask me, what would you do if you were Howard? I think I got sort of ground zero. You're still building the program, and you've got to try to put together a very, very solid drive. They've had one, but you've got to have three or four more, and you got to ask for defense to step up, stem the tide. We said it in the pregame. You look at John Mayne Martin averaging 24.4 yards per carry to him. And how many does he need now? We mentioned at the top, I think it was 173 yards he needed going into. He needs 65 more yards to hit 1,000. To hit 1,000 down 63. So, again, something that, that certainly can be attained in this half if he continues like he's playing. Ruiz will boot this one away. Mahomes coming 2020. 
Dominic Logan Neely and Jamichael Jones back deep right around the three-yard line awaiting the kick. One of the things you hope they talked about is the special teams and, and, and being able to receive this kick in proper field position. This one will go into the end zone for a touchback. You'd have to assume that that was discussed at halftime. It should have been, should have been the, one, of the, one of the first things, especially my special teams coaches. So it'll be first and 10 for the Bison from the 25 yard line. Howard with 160 yards of total offense in the first two quarters. Wins right. Haley is the slot man. Screen pass to Parson off his hands. And That's a lateral. Say it was a lateral. It was picked up by A and T. Joseph Stuckey. Ruling on the field is a backwards pass. Recovered by North Carolina A and T. First down, North Carolina A and T. Stuckey's first. scrimmage. Second fumble recovery of the season for Stucky. Okay, the, the line of scrimmage was 25 yards. The previous play. So what they're going to take a look at was this ball passed or beyond the line of scrimmage or backwards. And it is, it is an angle thing, and from my angle, from where we're looking at, it looked like it was a lateral, a backward pass, for lack of a better term. And then the ball came up on the hop. They're going to take a quick look and, and, and look at this to make certain. But. Uh, And it looks like Rory Bernard is missing his replay guy. And he is not a happy camper right now. Hey, uh, uh, Jesse, you got it? Well, Stan, we did not get a good look to see if it was indeed a forward pass or not. I thought it was very close, but the official decided to let the play go, knowing you could always go to replay well, and reverse course. His first indication I was watching his movement was the arm angle, mark motion, his live ball. So that let me know that the lines judge on that side of the field thought it was a, it was a backward pass. Again, good. Replay, we may be able to see it, we may not. And if not, then you go with the with the call on the field. But it's a, it's a good teaching point for people watching the ball game that anytime there's a swing pass that's vertical to the line of scrimmage like that, you've got to make that a play. You, you, you don't just give up on it because you don't catch the play. And they'll take your time and they'll make a decision. And they're either you're going to be second down and 10 for Howard or you know, first down in the red zone for North Carolina AT. Good play by Stuck. And that's the alert smart play that you have to make. You play until the whistle's blown. Yeah. Here we go. After further review, the ruling on the field stands. First down, North Carolina AT. Well, this just watching the play. Develop. It looked like that was a good call, and he'll stand by it. So here we go. I mean, you know, you talk about how you're going to get back in the football game. First play, Howard meets disaster. So here comes A&T. John Main Martin is the tailback. William Simpson, the fullback. Carter in the gun. Thanks the motion, man. Balls away! Flings it to Bell. Who brings it down for six? Well, a couple lessons that are being learned today. One is you got to play through the whistle. Next time is don't beat A&T, and then you be the next opponent for homecoming. Because all the frustration, there's motion, you're in one-on-one -on -one coverage, you've got a big receiver in bail, not a lot you can do. And for the third or fourth time this afternoon, passes not only touchdowns but regular plays, Carter has put the ball exactly where it needs to be for a catch and a big play for a and Noel Ruiz splits the uprights. 
14 seconds come off the clock. Seven points go up on the board for A and T. One play, 13 yards in seven seconds for the Aggies. Elijah Bell seems to be on his A game today. Well, he's, he's got some great matchups. And he, he's talking about the all time leading receiver in Aggie history. He only had, believe it or not, a one touchdown catch going into this afternoon. But he's had some big receiving ball games. The nine against the L State National TV game a, a month ago. You know, the nine the game you and I had at the beginning of the season against Elon. So he's had some big number football games. Bale now with his fourth catch. 80 yards in his second touchdown in the afternoon. So Ruiz will try and put this one in the end zone again. Logan Neely will take it out. And he's tripped up shy of the 20. The Bison continue to short themselves yards on field position, deciding to take the ball out of the end zone. This is field awareness. And if you saw that was a great shot by our crew today, you could easily see Neely straddling the goal line. So again, that's one of those, you know, put your hand up for the fair catch, you get the ball to 25, let it go by you, get the ball to 25, catch it, and you're in no man's land, you end up starting your drive at the 20. Snap bobble, picked up by Parson, and he'll be brought down shy of the line of scrimmage. It was Jacob Roberts in on the stop. Wow, what a game Jacob Roberts has. Has eight tackles in the first half. Five unassisted and two and a half sacks he's credited for. So you're looking for a guy that's really stepped up his ball game this afternoon. Look at Jacob Roberts. Quarterback keeper and Williams is dropped. Looked like they had two men in motion actually on the outside. No flag it. So it'll be third and long for Howard. As the Aki defense has not let up here early in the second half. The Howard coaching staff is kind of a fun when you run, you can't really run the football with a and knowing you're in pass formations or pass situations. They just tee it off and try to hit you. Bison keep it on the ground. Carson, he would have gained a few. All right, it'll be fourth and nine, and the punt unit will trot out onto the field. So a and will most likely have terrific field position yet again. Good job by the Aggie defense. Michael Branch, you saw running off the field, number 52. Another very solid game, clogging up the inside. Punt just got off. Banks will let it hit the field, picks it up, splits two defenders, rushes to the outside, and he is yanked, but we do have a flag down. Back at the 11, and another one came flying in at the 41. That might have been a face mask or something on Howard. We'll see what this other penalty was. Fourth down and nine, I think it was. Yeah, fourth and nine. So we'll hear yet again from Rory Bernard. He's been a busy man today. Lately, he has been. <laughs> Definitely earning that paycheck this afternoon. But this has been a solid officiating crew all afternoon long. There are two fouls on the play. One against each team. Running into the kicker. Offense. Personal foul. Face mask. Defense. Those penalties offset. Replay. Fourth down. That's the second time today that A&T has been penalized for running into the kicker. And we'll see at the end of the play. Good return. Right there. Oh, yeah. Yeah, that's an easy call that time. Good job, Zuri Godfrey. Number 47 for the Bison. He got the whole face mask. Yeah, well, there. actually, both of them were face masks, to be honest with you. David Gillespie. <laughs> So Gillespie will punt this one away yet again.
unchallenged. Banks fields it. And this one will be down at the 39. Media timeout. It'll be A&T football when we come back. The Aggies leading it 41 to 6 on ESPN3. It's never gotten enough of it. So we proudly bring you more of it. The new 911 Timeless Machine. North Carolina A&T takes over first and 10 from the 39. Leading 41 to six. Jalen Fowler in at quarterback. Finished off the game down in Tallahassee. Went eight for 15 with 65 yards. And, and when Carter went out of the game last week, in a very crucial situation against Ford a and Fowler did a really nice job in leading the Aggies and getting setting up that you know, field goal that tied the ball game. And, was in the, and threw the ball very effectively, eight of 15, 65 yards. So this is a young quarterback that's got some smarts, good pass, good throw, good arm right there. Leslie breaks free. Towards the sideline, and he's dragged down by his tippy toes at the 10. Nice pass again, and we talked about it just secondly. That Fowler has the ability to make some plays, and he just steps in the pocket very easily, throws the ball, Leslie makes the catch, and, you, and what you're seeing today is the use of all of the Aggie weapons. The running game's good, the wide receivers are making plays, and your quarterbacks, as always, has been the tradition over the last five or six years, aren't making very many throwing mistakes. Elijah Bell lined up at the bottom of the screen, the handoff to Martin. Parts the Red Sea and is in. Jamain Martin, Just give him six. Well, if anybody wanted to know if the Aggies were going to be excited this weekend for homecoming, I think you're getting your answer. Jermaine Martin, this offensive line of North Carolina and T and Pettiford and Simpson and Wilson and Legrone and Keys doing a great job finding holes and the outstanding running back in Martin. The point after blocked, that's a live ball picked up by the Bison. And the long snapper, Petey Bush, able to drag down James Noel. Petey Bush using some speed. The kid from Richmond, the long snapper. Media timeout. Chases him down and says, you're not giving up any free points this afternoon. If you want some free food, you need to walk down the street. Great job by Bush. Good hustle. But another touchdown by the Aggies. 47-6, to A&T up. Back here in Greensboro, 47 to six, the touchback on the kickoff. So the Howard offense will head back out onto the field. Anthony is the slot man at the bottom of the screen. Williams, flush from the pocket, throws on the run, and that ball is intercepted. Nice defensive play to don't give up. Ruling on the field is an interception. That's First Chris down, Mosley. North Carolina a &T. That's Chris Mosley with the interception. And you get in a situation where you need RPO, RPO, and, uh, and and he just does a nice job of running running with the receiver at the last moment, making a break on the play. So a &T forces another turnover, gets the play. Watch the coverage here. At this point, you got to think about it. Deep pass, and you see the very end of the play, Moses just reaches up and, and makes the interception. And there's rolling of emotion. Everybody excited when the defense makes a play. Fowler in at quarterback. Sends Banks in motion. The jet sweep. Banks cuts it up and ran out of real estate after a couple of yards. 
Jalen Fowler, the red shirt sophomore. This is a young man who's gotten opportunities now in six games. Sam Washington starting to breed his quarterback of the future. Bell lined up at the bottom of your screen. A handoff to Baker. And he's thrown down hard. About four yards shy of that first down marker. You know, Fowler really showed me something last week coming in at a very difficult time with Carter down with the, with the cramps. Very warm down in Tallahassee and just kind of kept the offense going. He was a little shaky early on, but threw some really nice passes and played with a lot of poise. And so if you're if you're Coach Sam Washington and the crew, you got to feel very comfortable when he's in the football game now. He's going to get better as he goes along. Fowler changing the play. Two-step drop, throws quickly, finds Bell, just shy of midfield, spins out of a tackle, and is shoved down at the 44. The inside slant to a big receiver has been a success and a staple for a &T football for a couple of years with Bell. Bell just gets inside between the defender. That time it was Dixon. There's not a lot you could do. You just move the chains. You see the athleticism of Bell once he makes the catch. Hand off to Kashawn Baker. Takes the first hit and is able to gain a significant amount of yardage on first down. Elijah Bell nearing 100 yards receiving today. Zach Leslie already north of 100. Trips to the bottom of the formation. Fowler working quickly. Pulls it out on the option. Gains the first down and more. He's tackled at the 31. Fast approaching. 332 yards of total offense at halftime. The game a couple of weeks ago against Norfolk State was in a high of the year with 594 yards. Looked like they, the way they're playing right now, they can very easily eclipse their season high. Two weeks ago, Howard gave up 649 yeah. to Norfolk State. Well, Howard, you know, not trying to beat a dead horse, but every game this year they've given up over 300 yards of total offense. There's another 10 or 12. Fowler on the keeper. It's enough. Jalen Fowler, not afraid to take a hit. But do you have enough? Turn another one of the other There's another read. Influence you're blocking down, pull to the right side, and the quarterback reads it. You're reading that defensive end. If he goes with the flow, you just keep it, tuck it in, and try to pick up as much as you can. If no one's on the back side, you're going to have a big time play. He's able to get 12 yards off that. The Aggies stay in the trips formation. Play action. A screen to Leslie. Has some blocks. Is inside the 10, carrying the pile, and is into the end zone. Give him six. Zach Wesley would not go down. Got to give a lot of credit to Banks as well as to Bell, number two and three. Watch those receivers blocking downfield. And that allows him to go one-on-one. -on -one. Then you've got strength and size. Taking three, taking four. Bison into the end zone. Watch the blocks with the receivers. One, two. Count them if you ain't got nothing to do. Three, four. Make it five. Grab him. But you're not going to be able to take down Zach Leslie. Touchdown, Aggies. Ruiz on for the extra point. Hold this down. Kick is good. 54 to 6. AT on top. The duo of Zach Leslie and Elijah Bell on the outside, one of the best in FCS football. Well, today they're using all of their skills, their great hands, their size, and their athleticism. And you've seen it with a couple of catches by Bell. You've actually seen a couple of times where Banks has been able to get in the open field. And in that time, you saw the strength of Leslie to carry four white shirts into the end zone. 
and just a nice little what's usually known as about two or three yard pass but good, good job of blocking by wide receivers down the field and A&T continues to roll well A&T with a very important game coming up next week South Carolina State right here on ESPN 3 the blue and gold will be down in Orangeburg, South Carolina. The Bulldogs and Buddy Pugh having a terrific season. Buddy Pugh, of course, just became the winningest the head coach in South Carolina State history. So congratulations to Coach Pugh. Just a great, a great guy. And, you know, there are people that, that are Mr. Whoever their schools. And, yeah, Willie Jeffries is the legend. But when you think about South Carolina State football and some of the guys that are now going to the NFL, you know, you think about what Buddy Pugh's been able to accomplish. They've had success at the NCAA level, you know, going to the playoffs. They've won some MEAC titles and just continuing to send some quality players throughout the program, not only academically, but athletically. So, yeah, congratulations to Buddy. But you mentioned one of those guys, Darius Leonard. Darius Leonard, yeah. First team all pro in his rookie season for the Colts. Empty set for the Bison here on first down. Williams is sacked hard. And look who it is. Jacob Roberts in again on the sack. I'm telling you, he's getting my vote for the MIAC defensive player of the week because he's been all over with the flexion, with sacks, with the running plays. You just kind of like the aggression that he's played with, and the failure to block him is something that Howard's definitely got to address. Parson brought down. So it'll be third and long. It's third down. Twins left for the Bison. Off tackle. And brought down, still outside the sticks. So the punt unit will trot back out onto the field for the Bison. Right now, Howard is they're going to turn the ball over. You know, it's 91 yards rushing the ball this so far this ball game. I mean, to show you kind of how dominant this A&T defense has been this year and the last couple of years, but especially this ball this season. They've held four teams to less than 100 yards rushing. Think about what I'm saying. You've gotten this point in the season, four teams of less than 100. So it lets you know, and here's another bad kick. Get away from it. Gets a good roll. That'll be downed at the 49-yard line of we'll take over, take over A&T. Media timeout. And we'll take a timeout before the Aggie offense hits the field again. 54-6. The Aggies with the lead on The world's never gotten enough of it. So we proudly bring you more of it. The new 911. Timeless machine. Back with you in Greensboro. AT dominant here. On homecoming. Fowler still in it. QB. Sees a hole, tucks it, runs it. He's into Bison territory, and that will be good for a first down. Dave Fowler has done a nice job over the last two games when he's been inserted as the QB. Not making the mistakes, not afraid of the moment. Staying within the system. Quarterback keeper, pick up some yards, pick up six, seven, eight yards. Find your receiver open, put the slant pass on the money. Deshaun Baker is the tailback. A&T taking some time off the clock. Play clock down to four. Baker finds a seam. He's across the 25 and dragged down at the 22. That'll be good for another Aggie first down. What I like about these backs, they run hard. They run with an attitude. It's like, okay, I got the ball, and you know I have the ball. What are you going to do about it? Watch the explosion right there. Puts his foot in the ground. One guy misses him, got to hurry back, and then he's just, he's just on the ride. 
You see it on the Aggie bus. <laughs> see how far it's going to take you. Fowler working late into the play clock. JT keeps it on the ground. Baker tries to spin out of that tackle and cannot. Hassan Dixon wrapped him up. It doesn't take Baker long, and you saw another example of the explosion this once he gets the last minute. Watch this right. Little move right there. Goes into another gear, puts his foot down second time, and then very, very difficult. Three or four white shirts trying to bring the running back down. When you think about these backs and the holes they have, you know, not only is it a tribute to their speed, but the outstanding job the offensive line has done this afternoon. AT back in the red zone. Baker lost the ball and was able to secure it again once he was on the ground. Bring up third and about four for A and T. An absolutely dominant back, bounce back performance for the Aggies here this afternoon. You're talking about Buddy Pugh. I mean, the Aggies will take him on next week. Always a very difficult place to play is Orangeburg, South Carolina. So still a lot of big football games left to play for a and Baker takes the handoff and appears to have yeah, enough yeah, yeah, down yeah. on the initial spot. But we'll wait for the ruling. Well, a t trying to become the second MEAC team to win three straight outright MEAC titles. South Carolina yeah, State, the next week's opponent for the Aggies, won four straight from 1980 through 1983. It's and it is enough for a first down. So the Aggies over 500 yards of offense today. Fowler under center. Hands it off to Baker. And he's wrapped up at the line of scrimmage. Baker, talking here? about those championships at three no, 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 no. So I'm sitting there doing some homework, trying to do, you know, get ready for this ball game. And you look at, well, why are teams good? Well, we know that they've been in the top five the last seven seasons in defense. We know that. But then you start going deeper, and you look on the other side of the ball. And this, this blew my mind. Since the 2000, end of 2016 season, they have 86 rushing touchdowns. When you control the football, <laughs> you control <laughs> think, the game. Think about that. You know, and again, you've had you've had Renard throwing passes and everything, but in the last three and a half seasons, they've scored 86 times on the ground, and, and so you're dominating the ground, you're dominating the line of scrimmage. You're going to win a lot of football games. Fowler on the keeper, splits two defenders and reaches down for the six. Oh, you also have to think about who was rushing the ball. It, that's my point. Tariq Cohen yep. and Marquel Cartwright. Marquel Cartwright. And John Main Martin, who was the backup last year. And he's Cornette getting player. ready to break the thousand-yard barrier for like the 13th, 14th time in Aggie football yeah, history. Yeah. So you just see how, how dominant this program has been over the last couple of seasons. Started off with Rod Broadway. And you think about where A&T was beginning of the 2000s. You know, they were they were struggling. They had some 0-and-whatever seasons. 27-game losing streak. Exactly. Longest losing streak in the country. And then they were able to bounce back. Rod comes in, changes the attitude. They get some things. You know, Dr. Martin and his success Earl. As the AD, everybody kind of on the same plane. Aggie fans together, but you galvanize. I mean, you look at this crowd today, but they're putting their money where his mouth is. Everybody likes to win. You start winning. You start winning. You start winning. You've had success. You go to the celebration bowl. You don't go once and win. You go three times, and you continue to win. So, you know, this, this is a program, a nationally ranked and People know A&T, <laughs> and, and North look, Carolina A&T. And you look at the future schedule next year yes. going up to North Dakota State, that's going to be a tremendous non-conference game. That's a real test 
to see where A and T is. Well, in FCS football, I tell you what, I'm, I'm putting in. Yeah, whoever makes a decision. If you're looking, I, I, I'll, I'm ready. I'll be available for that ball game. But North Dakota State's been a phenomenal program. And the same thing was said two seasons ago as they got ready to play Jacksonville State, which was a prime FCS team, been in the NCAA, and A&T was able to, to, to pound them as you look at a, at a Howard player going off the field. But uh, this this program is standing the test of time. They take on all comers. So, well, they so said there's the Luke Williams down there. What's Luke talking about? 60 degrees and about a 40% chance of weather. But the Aggies say it's 54 to 6. It looks Baker like the clouds the are backfield. rolling in. We'll probably get rain tonight. But it won't be raining on the Aggies as they will celebrate homecoming 2019 with a big win at Jiho. Another Howard, Howard guy down the field. I think that's uh, 96. It looked like Tyler Fuller. Holding. Offense. Number 61. That penalty is declined. Result of the play. Fourth down. So another Bison down on the field. It'll put a four in the box after the play. Tyler Fuller was the lineman who was injured. So Ruiz on for the field goal. It'll be a 31-yard attempt well within his range. He's three for three this year inside the 30s. Hold us down. And the chip shot is good. This is seven to six. The Aggies out in front. The Aggies continue to find a way to put points on the board. They had an impressive ball game in the comeback win against Charleston. So they had a very good game, a very solid game, offense, defense, special teams, against Norfolk State a couple of weeks ago. But under the circumstances, and you didn't look at them as the underdog today, but the fact that you just lost, the fact that you're playing at home in front of a home crowd at homecoming, and all that goes with homecoming at North Carolina a &T, I think this has been an awesome performance. To put notice on the other schools that think they may have a chance to win the MEAC, go to Atlanta in December. Hey, you know, anything comes through Greensboro. This will be nine straight homecoming victories for a &T. Over the previous eight, the margin of victory was almost 30 points per game. Blowing that out of the water this afternoon are the Aggies. And this will be a touchback. So it'll be first and 10 for the Bison from the 25. <laughs> All smiles in the stands today. It'll be first and 25 for the Bison. That one kept on the ground. And that front seven for a t continues to earn penetration. Second and nine. Bring up second and nine. Mm -hmm. Hand off to Parson, and he's wrapped up at the line of scrimmage. See how quick those guys are getting off the football. I was doing a nice job of trying to make contact with the blocks, but just not able to hold on to him. You know, you know, guys were making some plays, and you got cornerbacks from coming down the line of scrimmage. And That's the end of the third quarter, Bracker. Media timeout. 57 6, AT in control. We'll be back after this.
on the MEAC Digital Network. On the fourth quarter underway here in Greensboro. Howard keeps on the ground. Williams ahead to the 37, and that'll be good enough for a first down. Ron Prince keeping his starters in. Trying to get them some valuable reps here late in the game. All smiles in Greensboro with this score, 57 to six. Another terrific homecoming performance for the Aggies. Parson on the jet sweep, turns it up. And it is tripped down to the ground at the 43. You look at Williams and you look at Parson, you, you see that this Howard team has some guys that potentially can, you can hear from down the road. And it doesn't look like it today, and the score definitely doesn't look like it. But, but I've been very impressed with the poise of Quentin Williams and, and his judgment, especially early in this football game, and the ability of, of, of Parson to kind of break some tackles, use some speed, get to the outside. The fake jet sweep. This time, the handoff goes to Crute. Josiah Crute's another one of these young running backs, only a sophomore. But, uh, you know, he's got a little power, goes about 200 pounds. And, again, the way they use him, uh, you know, you can see some flexibility in what, what Howard's been able to do. You look at their numbers today, 150 yards of total offense, and we mentioned a moment ago that A&T had not had allowed four teams to rush over 100. They've got 92 with a couple more yards now. So you're seeing some things. The jet sweep the opposite way. Good enough for a first down. The stop made by Stuckey. Parson going into the end of the quarter. Had about 50 yards of, of rushing, but with losses and whatnot, his net was only 22. So, again, his numbers aren't going to indicate how hard I think he's played as well. The one recurring theme that we've seen throughout this game is Every single one of these impact players, except for Kyle Anthony on the Howard offense, is an underclassman. Yeah. A big hit in the backfield. Doesn't matter, though, as that ball was down here for Crew. The option and the play action totally fooled a &T. And that was a great example of the read option that time. If that end comes crashing in, that back, when you get to the mesh point, you've got to be able to, to, to take away from the football. Williams does a really nice job that he along with Kreit, and there's a camera and everybody's watching one thing. Howard's able to sneak back the backside to get a first down. Nice play offensively. Bison elect to stay on the ground yet again. Bison trying to control the football here. Working out of the pistol. The counter. And a tackle almost immediately by Trey Smalls. One thing you've got to be impressed with also defensively by a and is so many plays as you look at it of loss of a yard. They, they've had a lot of tackles for loss. They, they've really impose their will this afternoon on the line of scrimmage. If you win the line of scrimmage, you're going to win a, little, a lot of football games. North Carolina A&T has done exactly that to them. Third and 11 for Howard. Play action. Williams rolls out. Looking downfield. Throws. And that one is intercepted. It's Chris Mosley for the second time today. Mosley had the pick earlier where he did a read. This time he just anticipates to throw. Williams a little bit lazy on his throw. Media timeout. Mosley does an excellent job of jumping the route. Take the pictures for homecoming. It's Aggie pride all day long. North Carolina A&T on a roll right now. North Carolina A&T leading at 57 to six. We'll take a timeout on the MEAC Digital Network. The world's never gotten enough of it. So we proudly bring you more of it. The new 911. Timeless machine.
after Chris Mosley's second interception of the day. North Carolina AT will have first and 10 from its own 37. Howard came into this ball game at minus seven on the turnover margin. Not done much to help themselves. Kingsley Ifedi is in at quarterback. Interesting story on Mr. Ifedi. Last year, he was on the ECU roster. Yep. And he sees what's going on on the sideline opposite of his. And he says to himself, well, I want to be over there. So he transferred. Well, he was one of the top-rated quarterbacks in the state. Threw for over 7,000 yards down in Charlotte. Had a really good career. Had a brother, actually, that went down to East Carolina for, for a while. But he was... He got, kind of got caught in the wash down there, being, being the number three guy. Played a couple of plays in the A&T uh, East Carolina game a season ago, a game where obviously the A&T won. And uh, really, with the team going downhill, new coaching staff coming in, really wasn't a place for him. Felt like he could make a contribution at the North Carolina A&T. His style of play made better suit A&T, the run option, a quarterback with a live arm. So... Remember, we saw him for a hot second against uh, Elon. I did. So getting out here today, good for Kingsley and Fetty. And you'll see him a lot, only a junior. T.J. Boyce is the single back off of his hip. Doubles formation. The Aggies going to use some time off of this play clock. That was a nice drive by Fowler. It was a nice drive. The Aggies with three quarterbacks who they feel comfortable inserting into games as Effetti tucks it, runs it, keeps his feet moving, and is awfully close to that first down marker. He appears to be just shy on the initial spot, and the officials will go ahead and wave the chains down the field. And this one, Effetti had a great, successful career doing advanced high school down in Charlotte, being a run pass, an option quarterback that could throw it deep, but could also run it. You saw a little bit of a glimpse of that then. Hadn't had a chance, obviously, the last season or two to do that, but that was a nice game by Kingsley and Fetty. It'll bring up first down. Twins left and right. Boyce takes the carry. And he's wrapped up in the backfield. Rodney Denor with the stop. We had talked about Denard early in the ball game. Had a couple of big hits. Haven't really talked a lot about him lately. But another one of those young, <laughs> that seems like the first thing you have to say when you talk about Howard. A young Howard football player, only a sophomore, came in with a couple of interceptions. This Howard team, you know, I mentioned that, came in negative seven as far as turnover. They really don't force a lot of turnovers. Hadn't recovered a fumble. Only had four intercepted passes two of which went to Denard, but a guy that's very active as a defensive back is that strong safety for the Bison. A lot of pieces for Ron Prince to work with. The Fetty keeps it and works himself into Bison territory. Make that jet sweep action there at that time to Cook and then just kind of see what the defensive end and the outside backer do, how they read it and you play off it. They take those guys that's going to be an open in the gap. As much charge as you possibly can. It'll bring up third and four. Trips to the bottom of the set. Fetty will change the play. left and cannot escape the grasp of Elton Jean Baptiste. So I'll put a four in the box and the punt unit will step out onto the field for A and T. See, this is that time there if you're an Aggie fan, kind of sit back, games in hand pretty much. You just kind of look over the campus and you look at the stadium and it's like, wow, you know, things are good. You know, you're hacking homecoming, you're seeing all your friends and family and telling old stories and making up some stories that go with the old ones. And you know, life is good right now for you. But a huge, huge game. 
coming up next week. We're moving there. We have a flag, and there was a ton of movement. I think Will Jones was the first All -star. one. Offense. Number 42. Five-yard penalty. Fourth down. Rivers boots this one away. And it'll take a Howard roll to around the 27 where it's down. Media timeout. Timeout on the field. a and in control as we head down the stretch right here on ESPN3. Bring you more of it. The new 911. Timeless machine. Howard will take over. Ball game and keep it on the ground. I gotta give it some credit to the Bay. Go march with it. Because they were up early this morning. They were here before we were. They had the parade. They, the I'm sitting there, the parade. they had stuff going on last night. They had the parade. They take a quick little break. Had a great halftime show, although I didn't really see much of it. A great halftime show. And they still jamming. Ball is loose. It's covered up by Howard. Now Howard. But you're right, Stan. The band has been fantastic today. The energy in the stadium was tremendous. And you have to imagine when the Aggies come back home in a few weeks for the Buffoon Cookman game, BBT Stadium will be full again. I don't know who's got more hits going on right now the, the Aggie defense or the ANT band. Both of them playing a lot of hits today. The handoff is stopped almost immediately by that front line of the Aggie defense. And it's not just the college-aged Aggies that are getting involved. How about the alumni cheerleaders that are oh, still yeah. going? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I mean, they're doing a great job. Some some great moves. I can't do it. <laughs> Cues in the house. A lot of stuff going on right now. If you're not interested in football games, a whole lot there for you. If you come to a and homecoming, and it is the greatest homecoming on earth, I'm not going to be biased. I'm just telling you what I see. There is something here for everyone. You don't have to be a football fan to love what's going on in Greensboro today. That punt fielded by Chance Pride, and he is dropped immediately. Media timeout. a and in control. We'll send it to break. The world's never gotten enough of it. So, we proudly bring you more of it. The new 911. Timeless machine. Got a chance, SD. We're, you're hearing us on camera having some fun, and you see, you know, the man, the myth, the legend, Rod Broadway, stops by the booth to say hello. And We're not worthy. No, we're not worthy. No, joking with us about, you know, I said, well, where are you getting ready to go? Come on, be us. No, I'm going to tailgate. I said, you're much more relaxed and enjoy it. It's a different perspective. What a, I mean, we talked about it early in the ball game. the turnaround that Rod Broadway made, the only coach in HBCU football history to win national championships at three different schools. And, and he's just done a remarkable job. And to see him now, part of the ANC legacy, the ANC family, good to see Rod Broadway. Couldn't get him to stop. He had things he had to do. Huh? Retirement must be great. It must be. Looks like it's treating him well. I know he's enjoying himself down on the coast. Fetty under center. Boyce down the sideline. And is taken down at the 24. A nice run from T.J. Boyce. Local product right down the road here in Lexington. North Davidson High School. And uh, again, you want to know what it was a good program? The third and fourth team guys come in, and they're giving you positive plays. Against the starting unit. Yeah. Well, they're, trying to, they're trying to earn time. You know what I'm saying? They're, you know. 
Aggies going with the old school look here on homecoming, the I formation. Really? Being Bill Hayes out of uh, retirement <laughs> today. He loved it. The wing T action here. And his voice running hard into the red zone. DJ Boyce on the carry. Pick up a four. Second down and six for the Aggies. Before I forget about it, let me tell you know, Sam and his crew and all the people that have been working with us behind the scenes have done an outstanding job today and just, just want to want to thank everybody. Voice breaks free. The stiff arm. And he's into the end zone. Give him six. Wow. <laughs> wow is all I can say. Big statement here coming off of a loss earlier in the week. And we've seen this over and over today. Great job at the line of scrimmage. Give us a great individual effort. The old style stiff arm, stiff arm after the old style power eye offense. Nice block there by Simmons. Watch the stiff arm right there. Get off me. I see Pater. Rogers, the backup place kicker, giving us put the uprights on the PAT. Back in uh, 2015, ANT beat how 65-14. But today, this game, homecoming 2019, has been a dominant, and I mean a dominant performance by the Aggies. Stan, how impressive is it to you that this A? Hey Google, how long is my commute? It should take 17 minutes. Play the Bill Simmons podcast. Sure, playing the latest episode of Bill Simmons podcast. What I expected to see. I didn't know that you could see as many explosive plays as soon as we get out of that. We did that thanks to one Mr. Martin. So it was a different type of ball game that I kind of expected. You look at the last numbers, they were well over 500 yards total offense. Don't have the latest numbers, but you got to think they're close to 600 yards in total offense. 574 is pretty total close. Of offense. Pretty close. And if things stay the same, 64 to 6, this will become the largest margin of victory in this series. With previously 51, right now. Bigger than that, 65 14 game up there. So you got a lot of fingers and toes you can do to count the math of this. I couldn't could figure that out. <laughs> this one fielder, I know he yielded. It's just interesting. You think back to the ball game, it was a 10 6 game, and everybody was holding their breath at Aggie Stadium if you're an Aggie fan. And you have a fourth down situation, you're not able to convert. And he quickly turns that into points. You have another misplay. And before you know it, the floodgates are open. Big play, big play, big reception. And then the defense really became even nastier than they've already been noted. At their own 31 yard You got what you've got now 64 to, to 6. Haley is the motion man. The handoff to Parson, and he's dropped after a gain of one. Thanks, Brian and his crew and Sports Information for all their all their work. Brian Holloway does a great job, one of the best Sports Information directors in the Mid-Eastern Athletic Conference. And again, I want to thank our crew; they've stepped up. It's, you know, a lot of things going on on homecoming. You know, a lot of things that you gotta. It can take you away from your focus. Well, they have delivered some nice pictures for us, and hopefully we've been able to bring them to the, to the fans that are watching this game on the digital network. So thank, thank you guys for all you've done today. Appreciate it. It's third. bring up third down. How about working out of the pistol? Amy the motion man. The handoff to Parson. 
And what do you know, Jacob Robert, there on the stop, he has been an absolute monster today. Don't know what the official count's going to be for Roberts, but unofficially had him for 11 tackles so far, which is definitely going to be his, his season high. Had eight against Norfolk and seven against Duke. So we'll see. Very impressive. And that'll do it. North Carolina A&T will take care of Howard. Four six here in Greensboro. Enough of it. So we proudly bring you more of it. The new 911 timeless machine. Florida A&M on Sunday. You, you want to know when you lose a close game, an emotional game, how will your team bounce back? Can you focus on the task at hand? Forget about homecoming. You lost. Can we get better? NT answered all those questions on offense, on defense, and on special teams. And it was just, it was total domination. The final score, 64-6. I mean, this is going to sound crazy, but the game wasn't that close. No, <laughs> it really wasn't, wasn't that close after a while. As you see, John, John, John Main Martin was just completely dominant in this one. Just shy of 1,000 yards on the season. He really is a tremendous rusher. Well, you, you love the fact that he can make plays in open field, break a tackle, and score. And then, then the A&T defense gets involved and Avery there with the play. And, and then there's a play fake. And I really was impressed with Quentin Williams. He carried the ball for 80 yards and had several yards of losses, but did a really nice job there. This is part of that first Howard drive, being able to find Anthony on a, on a key third down situation. Howard was 7 to 17 on third down. This is a nicely thrown ball that, as you can clearly see, with his knee touch, he didn't have possession of the ball, landed out of bounds. But Howard was able to finally put some points on the board, you know, with the Williams touchdown run. I think, you know, there's a little screen pass perfectly called again. AT was putting so much pressure on him. It was a good read there. And so you had AT guessing a little bit, Spencer. And then this was a nice throw here again. Coverage that they're going to call that as pass interference. This is going to eventually set up the Howard touchdown drive. A little fake there. Good block by the outside by Cornwell. And, and so we got a ball game right now. It's 10-6. So everybody's like, okay, what, what's going on? He's feeling the pain. They go for two. They don't have a kicker. Good deflected play. And that should have been your indicator right there that this was going to be a long afternoon. Carter throws over the middle. And someplace down the field, you're going to find Elijah Bell, and he does a nice job of catching and throwing and he gets first down. When you've got a weapon like Ruiz, you're going to win, and you're going to be in scoring territory a lot of times. Ruiz came into the game 11 out of 14 from field goals, made 4-4 today. That one was from 48 yards out, and then the defense took over, and pretty much it was time to dance on Howard because that's pretty much what the Aggies did the remainder of the football game. Very impressive win by North Carolina a It certainly was completely dominant throughout most of the game, and now setting themselves up for a potential championship run next week is going to be huge for A&T. That, that is a game that will set the tone for the rest of the season. Yeah, and, and you think about that, and you think about Howard, where they've got to regroup. They've got the, the TV game next week against North Carolina Central, and last I heard, Central and Delaware State were in a battle. So, again, you know, there's still some games to play for, still a learning experience, a very young team, as we've talked about a lot by Howard. They'll get better. But right now, if you want to win a MEAC title, the road goes through a &T. So for Stan Luter, I'm Spencer Turkin saying so long from BB&T Stadium in Greensboro, North Carolina. The final score, North Carolina.